Oh my goodness. Bad touching, harassment, sex, violence, fraud, threats. All things that could have been avoided if you had Fama. Stop hiring dangerous people. Fama.io What is going on, everybody? Ryan Leary, William Tink up here with The Barf. This is the look at the week that was, so you can be prepared for the week that is. William, what's going on, brother? I am having a fantastic Sunday. So, uh, yeah. how are you? I'm, you know what? I can't complain. There's no rain today. It is oh, yeah. somewhat mm, walkable outside, okay. not much else. But you had a big weekend this weekend. I did. We dropped our uh, oldest son off at the uh, Corps of Cadets at Texas A&M. That sounds and, so uh, scary. It's, uh, well, it's, it's the Army. So, yeah. you know, they're going through Hell Week this week. Mm. And uh, we'll, we'll see them Friday and uh, sometimes on Saturday. Already? And, you get uh, to visit them? Yeah. It's after Hell Week they go through a ceremony, kind of a graduation from, from Hell Week. Because uh-huh. it washes some kids out. Uh, In fact, the commandant <laughs> during his presentation to the parents was like, "You're going to get calls <laughs> this this week. Come pick me up. <laughs> you may get a delivery from your child. <laughs> this is not for me. Come pick me up." Uh, which I'm not worried about uh, in terms of our son, just mm-hmm. because Henry's been away from home at a lot of different right. instances He's in done his a life. Ton of camps and- Done a ton of camps and all that other stuff. Yeah. Plus, he's had me as a father. So, like, he told me last night that uh, he got screamed at about something. He couldn't even remember what he got screamed at. He's like, what, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, ah, yeah. there you go. See? Yeah, it's nice. Nice. It I saw out. the, um, I saw Michael posted the picture of his hair. Oh, yeah. So, his but hair it... is uh, gone. Welcome no, there's to nothing. the club. No, they're just, they're called Fish. So he he doesn't have a first name. No one, like it's as if there mm-hmm. is no first name. So no one knows him as Henry. Other than his roommate. Nice. Everyone else. And you, you call your, your, you know, your roommates are your roommates for four years. Right. So you don't, you, the core never leaves campus. I mean, in terms of housing. They don't, mm-hmm. they don't get apartments. But you're there for four years. Hmm. So you. God bless so. them, man. Thank him already for the service. Good luck. Hundred <laughs> percent. Better 100%. man than I have ever been. That's no know. crying. That was the craziest thing in the world. Is uh, normally because you're going into the dorm room, putting up a bunch of stuff, and it's a big process. Mm-hmm. There was none of that. Like we, we went in. Yeah. Uh, my wife uh, and him unpacked, uh-huh. and uh, okay, and then we like went and did stuff around campus. Like it was. Hey, see you later. It was two trunks. It was two like boxes. Yeah, yeah I saw. I saw the the trunks cut and put in, and that was it. That was it. Nice, <laughs> nice. I remember going yeah. in. I had speakers and oh, all yeah. my other. Oh yeah. yeah, oh yeah. Not a normal college experience. So for no. folks that have a normal college experience, I can see the longer you spend time with your child, the more it becomes. Right. Well, yeah, but not well. Not this. This is the army. <laughs> I guess congratulations. You got one more left. In the house. And 100%. so, uh, yeah, enjoy that. I'm sure we'll have fun. So why don't you uh, kick us off? We've got some fun stuff to talk about. So let's do uh, breaking news first. This is the B. Um, have you ever wondered about H-1B visas? Not have you really. ever kind of given any thought to that? All right. Mm, so no. it's a lottery system. <laughs> no. Right? And and these are for people that are outside of our country that want to work in our country. And yeah. you got to be sponsored. All right. Okay, though. So basically, there's about 85,000 H-1Bs that are available. They come up through this every year. They come up through the same process, and hundreds of thousands of people apply. So far more people apply than there are spots. So here's a new mm-hmm. story on the businessstandard.com. Uh, H-1, H-1B visa lottery decoding multiple registration scams. All right. Mm. 
So here's what here's what really made me mm, laugh, but at the same time cry because uh, basically what 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 staffing firms in India and this calls out India in particular, but I'm sure mm-hmm. it's happening elsewhere, is they would create multiple uh, registrations for the same person. <laughs> so that so tracks. right. Right. So like you, you know, if you're, you're an engineer and, and you have a specialized talent and, uh, you, you know, someone will sponsor you, et cetera. Now they've got like 15 different registrations for each person. So you increase your odds. That's not legal. <laughs> no, not legal, but it's not stupid either. I, I, no, <laughs> I, I, it was a Bloomberg. So if you want to dig into the real, like how they got there. Yeah. Bloomberg did the investigation, so reputable source. Go check that out. Um, I I kind of file this under kind of shitty but smart mm-hmm. in my brain. It's like it that's shitty. Yeah. However, it's a reminder of <laughs> it's a, for me. It is a reminder of how to think outside the box and do yeah. things, you know, a little differently. Push push the edge a little bit. Well. That's that's what you want ultimately yeah. uh, until you get caught. <laughs> yeah, well, hey, it works. Before we move on, I need to let you know about my friend Mark Pfeffer and his show, People Tech. If you're looking for the latest on product development, marketing, funding, big deals happening in talent acquisition, HR, HCM, that's the show you need to listen to. Go to the Work to Find Network. Search up People Tech, Mark Pfeffer. You can find him anywhere. All right. There you go. So Beamery okay. uh, is drinking its own champagne. They released an independent AI audit. Uh, their independent AI audit results uh, from Warden AI. So I like that. Yeah, yeah, good good for them. This is a smart move for Beamery. This is all about transparency. It's a trust builder with their stakeholders. Um, it's a conversation that is being had within their prospect base already. So why not lead the way and, and be seen and heard? So they ran there's only uh, a, there's only a few in HR tech that are, have have uh independent audits. It's expensive too, by the way. Yeah. yeah. So there's that part too. Right. Not just the like, oh my well, we should do it. Like Oh. It's several hundreds of thousands right. of times. But to release to it, be public with it, fantastic. Good good for them. Smart. They ran b- both, and I'm not, I'm no expert, and so don't ask me any questions. They ran both the disparate and counterfactual analysis. Yeah. Uh, in both cases, yeah. the audit came back with no significant bias in their process. That's great. So, Take that for what you will, but kudos to them for uh, doing this again. They they did this last year as well. Uh, but I mean, I think for for me, when you want to be a leader in anything, then you need to break through what you always say the status quo. And I think uh, right. this is a big step in that in that direction. So kudos to Beamery, and uh, less less. I would like to see more uh, tech in the space. More companies do this. I think it's going to be mandatory at a certain point yeah. that people will say, well, just like your audited financials, at a certain point, right. people are going to say, well, you're audited for AI. And uh, again, you can fix it. That's the whole point of an audit. Right. <laughs> That's like, the whole point. Something's wrong. I get it. You're nervous to release results, but, right. you know, it works. Always. Yeah. All right. Let me tell you a little bit about Meta. Uh, Meta pays $1.4 billion Whew. in a settlement with Texas over the use of facial recognition software. Wow. Yeah, no joke. That the lawsuit money. alleges that the social media giant has collected the biometric data of millions of citizens without their consent. Wow. This was on Spiceworks. So uh, good for this gets Ken Paxson, our AG, who's crazy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Not not shocking, or governor's crazy, or AG is crazy. But anyhow, he's oh. the one that filed this. He's the one that was behind this suit. One point four billion dollars. That's no chump change. Oh. Um, where where does the un- money go? That's what I want to know. Oh, I'm sure it's going to go into you know s- stuff. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the, the AG sure picks up a forty million dollar mansion. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, 
and he has been uh, accused of fraud. Well, and, man, uh, yeah, there there's you lawsuits go. pending against him. So, no, I don't think it'll be. I think he'll actually go in to fund other types of Texas programs mm-hmm. uh, that no one likes other than Texas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but the, so found this article in Spiceworks, um, which is a really cool mm-hmm. site. So go take a look at it. But what it reminded me of is that the data that we collect from employees, both how we collect uh, that mm-hmm. data, but also what we do with that data. Because I also saw another article in a different place about hackers are now starting to target enterprise software. Like never before, like they've seen an uptick that was on White Hat, but basically an uptick in the attacks on enterprise software. So again, this is one of those deals where buyers beware and asking for like what you said with Beamery audited AI. Yeah. We've also got, they've got to have a, I think a, a, a more of a, a, IT does this really well, but HR, because of SaaS, we haven't really kind of grown that muscle memory of talking about security and uh, and and privacy. Right. With with what we just learned with Meta because of what they did, okay, check. But also with hackers going after enterprise software more, we're going to see more data being leaked. So we've got to, it, it puts a little bit more of an onus on HR, which is a good thing. It's not a bad thing. It's just... It's oh. in your buying in your buying process. There's got to be a part of the RFP or a part of the conversation that says, "Okay, tell us about security. Right. Tell us about privacy. Tell us about when you get hacked. Not if you get hacked. When what? you get hacked. What's the what's the process? Right. And so that's what it really. Yes, it's 1.4 billion to the for to uh, Texas for things that they weren't supposed to be doing, but it really is more of a bigger story about. Okay, this should change our buyer behavior of enterprise software right all right so first off big shout out to day force i wanted to say this earlier day force wallet surpasses four billion dollars in payroll delivered congrats uh to achieving that milestone that's a lot of money going through Was payroll that, did we we learned that um i think last year at insights right uh with day force yeah mm-hmm so it, yep. it, when we learn that, I don't think there's fees on either side, right? I don't remember. It's a good question. Okay. I don't think so. I, don't, I think it's fee-less. I don't think there's fees. Yeah, I think it's fee on both sides for yeah. the employer and the employee. Yeah, it's their I money. It's they're just processing and doing their thing. Okay. And yeah, we can look. We can look. We can look that yeah. up. To make sure that's so. Right. All right. EEOC. I did this. Um, I did it last week. Just kind of a rundown of the lawsuits and settlements because there's always a lot. Um, always. So I'm going to run through, and let's see if we can pick one out here. Radiant Services to pay $1.1 million for hiring discrimination based on race, national origin, and sex. Mm. Yeah, nice. Charlotte IHOP is paying a is paying forty k for religious discrimination. Innovative Service Northwest to pay $136,500 in a disability lawsuit. ProPallet pays... Just 50K in a retaliation suit. Not bad. Third Bench pays 165 in retaliation. And Walmart, your best friend, is Heck paying yeah. 75K in a disability discrimination lawsuit. That's probably, that's probably ADA related. Um, mm. hmm? it, it would be With some of these, it'd be really like the religious discrimination in Charlotte on the IHOP. I'd really like to know what that was. Yeah. Like I'm curious about. Okay, is that is that we don't want boy people to wear crosses? Uh, is it um, atheists? We don't like atheists yeah, at yeah. our Char- I at our Charlotte IHOP. Like, it. I would love to know. Yeah. Like, okay, you can't wear your you know your whatever uh, coverings yeah. and things like that. Like, what is that bit? Yeah, uh, you know, since, a, this, so since I've been grabbing them in aggregate and not digging into each individual story, you know, it's. Well, so, it, Sometimes it's hard to find. It's it it is, and you know I'm looking yeah. at you know I'm looking at the just the sheer amount, and I know this isn't all of them, but the sheer amount oh, no. of EEOC claims and suits and fines and penalties, it's, it's it's outstanding. Like it is it is just ridiculous the amount. So like, that this is, out is one there. of the things that keeps HR up at night is because yeah. they they put the things in play 
to so that you don't do these things, but then employees do them. Yeah. And all of a sudden, then they get caught in the lawsuit, and you know, then it goes through the the process. Yeah. And so, you know, at a certain point, you know, there isn't an HR leader at any of these, an HR a competent HR leader at any one of these places that didn't lay down the proper way to do things. Right. It's right. <laughs> I, I would so so my recommendation go go check out the EEOC website whether you're in HR. Or oh not, yeah. If you're listening, it's, e, it's e, fascinating e, the amount of things that are there. EEOC.gov, shocking, not shocking, but yeah, I mean, there's always stuff there and there's always going to be stuff there Mm -hmm. when, you know, people do what they're going to do. All right. It's getting harder for companies to keep politics out of the workplace. Employers Mm -hmm. teach de-escalation techniques as divisive, divisive. Political discussions <laughs> become almost impossible to avoid. So this was in the Wall Street Journal. So, you know, when something hits the Wall Street Journal, you know that it's uh, serious. So my when I when I was reading it, I'm thinking to myself, good fucking luck mm. trying to keep discussions out of the workplace because it's so subtle. Yeah. Like like I was thinking about like what stickers people have on their cars and what yeah. churches they attend and what sports kids play, like all this stuff. Are they wearing candy. a pin? Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. Exactly. Are they wearing a pin and not wearing a pin or wearing a pin incorrectly? Okay. All right. Is your hair part like of everything, left or right? You know, it's all... Everything has been politicized and it probably always was. We've just become more aware that everything's politicized. Okay. So I think – as re- as I read the article, I'm thinking they're talking about how to keep it out, and it reminds me of the war on drugs. And the war on drugs, simply put, was a war on the supply side of drugs. So what we're going to do is make it harder for people to get drugs rather than the demand side of drugs, meaning... Why do you want drugs? Had we spent, in my in my humble opinion, if we would have spent the amount of money that we have since the 80s on the war on drugs, not on the supply side, but on the demand side, put therapy uh, mm-hmm. centers on every Good corner, point, yeah. then we, we wouldn't have problems with drugs. I think that essentially the same thing needs to happen here. Trying to stop politics at work is just, uh, it, I don't think you're ever going to be able to do it. A. B, why don't you just take that energy and focus people on civil discourse and how to respect opposing views? So instead of trying to keep it out, mm-hmm. you create a lot of rules like, ah, oh, you can't talk about Trump. Okay, well, you know what? It's like some holistic shit you're talking about here. Like, <laughs> Oh, yeah. No, def- <laughs> uh, definitely. After a couple of edibles, here's the thoughts that come out. So the idea is, is stop focusing on keeping it out focus more on teaching uh, your employees hey how do you have a conversation how do you have a debate how, how do, do you, you have discourse hey <laughs> i mean very you, Philly. you you very have Philly. this beautiful yes. way of saying it me yeah just be an adult how do you be, uh, just be an adult how you be, yeah how do you be normal just sure. be normal. Yeah. But see, the thing is, is if we teach our employees civil discourse, so we teach them debate and we teach them to re- respect, most importantly, respect opposing views. Right. Like this is Voltaire 101, right? So I don't agree with you, but I agree with the fact that you have to have an, appo- uh, an opinion. And I will defend that, that you have to have an opinion. No. We don't have to agree. In fact, mm. I don't think you should agree. You need to have a, a little bit of conflict. Mm-hmm. So, you know, Wall Street Journal, take a look at it. It's actually, it's fascinating the way they framed it up in terms of keeping politics out of work. I think that's wrong. I mean, I think that approach has already been tried. And I think it's a failed bit. I think we should be teaching them how to how to actually bring it in. Like, come on, let's go. Have bring it in. How to have conversations without killing somebody. <sighs> All right, uh, so I, I do want to go back uh, to Radiant. I, 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 I did mean to talk about the Radi- Radiant uh, Corp. So they were paying $1.1 $1. $1 This is from the EEOC. Mm, They're paying $1.1 $1. $1 to settle 
the lawsuit for hiring discrimination uh, for race, race, national origin, sex. So mm. the 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 details here since 2015, the company uh, allegedly has failed to hire black, Asian, and white non-Hispanics for uh, low skill positions um, yeah. <laughs> and segregated jobs by sex. Oh, that's a double whammy right there. Yeah. So first so, of all, you're not going to hire Brown. Got no. it. Secondly, you're men. You're going to have women doing. Yeah. Dude, that's so wrong. Mm-hmm. Now, a quick question: If they've settled, can we take away the word allegedly? I don't know. I, I, that's, I'm not I, really, that's actually I mean, a question. Yeah. I mean, set, that's settled, a question. settled doesn't admit guilt, right? I mean, it just says, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not a lawyer. I'm just saying. Set when I seems hear like, settled, regardless of what the like definition it. is, when I hear settled, I hear seems they like just don't want to deal with the bullshit. Oh my goodness! Bad touching, harassment, sex, violence, fraud, threats—all things that could have been avoided if you had Fama. Stop hiring dangerous people. Fama.io. That's right. Well, it probably it's easier to pay 1.1 just to get done with it. It's cheaper. Uh, but this is just, again, bad actors doing bad things. Yeah. Yep. Follow, it under, I mean, follow that under that file. But they got this, the double whammy of both the race discrimination as well as sex discrimination. So I'm glad they got caught. I'm glad they had to pay a fine. I hope mm-hmm. they fix it. All right, Ryan, the summer job is back. I know you know this. Teens enter the labor force as employers dish out yeah. higher wages and perks. This was on CNBC. So one of the things, the data points that it was fascinating to me is uh, they went from 1150 in 2020 to 1550 yeah. in 2024. That's $4, right? Over four years. That data is coming from Gusto, by the way. It's a dollar uh, a year raise. That seems about right. Uh, Again, I think we've been underpaying uh, teen talent forever. So, but what it, what the article and what the whole trend, where does it tap out? At what point is it not a dollar a year? Because right now that's just, you know, okay, we went from 1150 to 1550. Okay, totally get it. Where is it? 25, 6, 7, 8, 9, 30. Is where do, where does that tap out? And it just like, okay, we can't we can't go any higher, or does it just increase what you pay at the register? Like, is it now is that just more of a cost factor in uh, what you buy at your grocery store or wherever? Yeah, like it, it, it's an interesting it's an interesting conversation, and mm-hmm. you know, I'm living it now. Right with with one of my of my daughters, and <clears throat> it's interesting. So when I grew up, when we grew up, it was yeah, go make five bucks an hour, seven. Like that's good. You you're you're a kid. What do you need? Right, just go make a little right. bit of money, get the experience. Scratch. But when I look back at that, even though I was just pushing carts, now. Uh, maybe because it's me. I wanted to be the best damn cart pusher I in my no, I, right? I wanted to make sure they were aligned and this and that all but that was besides the point. Why should I get paid less because I'm fifteen? Right. If I'm doing a great job, right? Let's just there, say I started at fourteen. There's child labor laws in place for a reason. Right. Yes. Yeah. I'm I'm I was fourteen. Now I'm sixteen. I've got two years of experience. Why should I get paid because you know, as a teen, because you right. feel that I should just be getting a little bit of money, right? I could be just as good as the thirty-five-year-old stocking shelves. In fact, I 100%. could probably be better and faster and more nimble at it. I don't know, you know. But when I look at my daughter, for example, she's they they actually cut the rates where she and and now I'm really? kind of in this predicament. I'm having this conversation hmm. with her because it's still good money. They were yeah. they were paying the lifeguards at the one place seventeen dollars and change or seventeen. Now they're That's coming good. down to fifteen. Wow. Like she's been there for is a that, couple. Is of that years. for the fall? Is that because this is there's just a less fall, winter, and spring? Yeah. 
Now, oh. she, she's been working there for a couple of years at the 17 and going up. And now yeah. they're coming back down. She's like, I don't want to work there. But I'm yeah. like, mm, it's still $15 an hour. Yeah. You're not going to get that somewhere I, else. I don't know that to be true. Right. Well, I don't know it to I, be true. But this is the conversation I'm having currently. Like, yeah. this is a difficult There's, decision because would I take $2 less an hour to do the same oh, job? Hell no. Oh, hell no. <laughs> right. <laughs> no. And so my, no. my advice to her and nor was, should you. No. And my advice to her was, if you go somewhere else and you make less money, I'm okay with that. As long as you're okay with that. It's the principle yeah. of it. Why would I do the yeah. same job that I've been doing for a couple of years and you're going to cut my hours, cut, not even cut the hours. You're going to cut because my Because of their seasonality. Because, because of the seasonality <clears throat> of a pool yeah. is there's more demand, i.e. they're getting more fees. They're probably getting more rev. Uh, not probably. They're getting more revenue then in the summer. Then cut my hours. Don't cut my rates. Right. So there's a different way to deal with that. And it's, it's exactly yeah. what you said. Keep your rate the same. Cut your hours. Anyhow. Yeah. So, yeah. No, I, I'm, I'm right in the, in the, in the middle of trip. that. So. All right. Acquisitions. Why don't you kick us off? Uh. I think you've got to, uh, you were going to tell us a little bit about uh, Eventbrite. Oh, Eventbrite. Yes. Our friends at Eventbrite. So this story caught my eye because, so they're doing a layoff, right? So not nothing crazy here. They're, they're doing a layoff. I, I wasn't, I guess I don't look at Eventbrite as like this massive player in it's, this space, right? Yeah. They've been around forever, but they're kind of lame. There's, they're, they don't hear of Eventbrite and think innovation. Uh, so anyway, this is their second cut in the last couple of years. Um, this time they're doing 100 employees, so it's uh, about 11 percent of their of their staff. Uh, in so it's about a thousand employees. Yeah, okay. yeah, about about a thousand employees. Uh, of course, you know they're trying to talk about you know how they're working hard to help them on the on the exit. It's going to spend about seven million dollars in severance for the hundred employees. Um, uh what I was That's pretty cool. I, I guess what I was shocked at. So their revenue, their net revenue, uh, was eighty four point six million, which is seven percent year over year up um, mm-hmm. for the for the company year over year. But ticket sales, so for where what they sell tickets to, was down six percent, which is about fifty million down. So, anywho. All this to say that they have brought in ex-meta executive uh, Samantha Wu as their new CMO. Uh, makes sense because their challenge has been the ability to attract and retain creators to use mm-hmm. their platform for ticketing and, and all of that. So sounds like... Best, yeah. best part, first of all, layoffs So Got it. Um Best part of this whole thing is that there's they put seven million dollars in seven. Yes, that's that's. Uh, I love hearing that because a lot of people get to that point where they have to make a cut, yeah. and they don't have they they don't put aside enough money for getting yeah. people onto their next thing. So good for them. Yep, yep. On, on that front. Now we right, right. move on. No, we will move on to how companies can take. A global approach to AI ethics. It's tying back to your uh, Beamery uh, bit earlier. Mm. This is Harvard Business Review. So you can take a look at this. And while reading this article, I immediately thought about how HR should drive this train and what a Mm. wonderful opportunity it would be for talent professionals to impact the business positively. So think of it like this. My father used to do this bit. You're either on the train or off the train. Right. But I modified it slightly to you're either on the train or off the train, driving the train, or being run over by the train. Hmm. So, now, and of course, I just made that up. <laughs> I think they should drive the train in AI. And, and, and especially as it relates to people. Yeah. Anything people related, they might not be able to drive the AI for the company, but either it touches people in any facet i think they should be able to jump in there uh but again it gets this how do you bring an ethical ai you talked about audited ai ethical ai completely different similar how does hr and recruiting how do they get in there and put their own fingerprints on ethical ai 
and then they they're going to have to jump in feet first in my opinion so that's that it's on uh, harvard business review hbr.org go take a look at the full article because it is quite fascinating about ai and ethics so hr recruiters Ethics. Go get involved. <laughs> I've been trying to jump to acquisitions forever. You have. I don't know You've why. Got an itch. I'm just I, so excited about the acquisitions this week. So. There's uh, there's no judgment no, coming for me. No, no, uh, no, no. But guess what we're I'll doing right now? Yeah, acquisitions. Acquisitions. Let's do acquisitions. Let's do All right, MPA acquires uh, SDP, Southland <laughs> Data Processing, to enhance payroll and HCM solutions. This is on SiliconValleyJournals.com. You can go look at the story. This is Fish Eating Fish. Mm-hmm. Acquisition is is set to strengthen MPAs, kind of p- position in the market by integrating some of what SDP's expertise and expanding their capabilities. So terms not disclosed on this acquisition. Uh, so there's that. But uh, good for MPA, good for SDC, SDP. Uh, and all involved. So nice. there you go. Nice. Yep. All right. Zip Recruiter. We we're both looking at this this week. Zip Recruiter yes. acquires UK based break room uh, to expand mm-hmm. in the US. So break room is break. They provide job seekers with insights into things like pay, working conditions, company culture, through ratings, right? So this is a ratings play. Um, so on their site, it says that they contrast uh, with traditional employee review sites, <clears throat> a la the Indeeds and Glassdoors of the, the world. So curious here to get your take. Uh, they're not mentioning them by name, but is is this a is this a stab at it to, to go after this? I know they're they're yeah. looking to do it in a different way where it's not just vomiting on the employer but actually providing yeah. real truthful insight. There's been a couple of plays that have gone after this, comparably being probably one of the most mm-hmm. notable, is they looked at culture. So compensation, culture. They looked at some other facets than Glassdoor. Uh, there's a, re- a reason Recruit Holdings purchased uh, Glassdoor and has integrated a Glassdoor. Glassdoor still operates separately yep. than the, Indeed, but the idea is that on the back end, they're sharing data uh, for both sides. So this does get, for me, it's, I think it's a good move for ZipRecruiter. It edges them closer to kind of having a, a more solutions to sell clients. So they've got jobs they can sell. So now what else can they sell to them? And I think that's probably what right. investors are looking for is, okay, you need to expand your revenue streams. So this is a great acquisition because somebody's already kind of got gotten a bit up and rolling and it's moving and now it's uh, now you put it, the power of zip recruiter behind it. Uh, I think it's great for them. I think it's great for the folks at break room uh, as, in terms of an exit. And uh, so yeah, yeah, good acquisition, solid use of money. Yes. Ryan, are we already to the R's? We the research are. There was. I was so excited to get what? to acquisitions. And we had yeah, to... you, no, no, that's <laughs> fine. We're, well, now we're on research. Yeah. I, uh, we've talked several weeks in a row about DEI. Yeah. But I found a study that uh, talked a little bit about DEI backlash and what employees hmm. really think. This is Sarah Mount. Uh, this is their 2024 DEI kind of national survey. That's Sarah Mount. S e r a m o u n t dot com. You can find they've got all kinds of insights. Yeah. So, as I looked at their study, as I looked at the findings in particular, it's like, okay, wait a minute. The findings are interesting, and I'm going to go through about four data points in, in a second. But it's they're inconsistent, and mm. what it got me to think about is how do we define inclusive? What's what's our working definition of in- inclusive and inclusivity like you might view inclusive differently than i do we might define it yeah. differently I, and so I think it's a little subjective it seems like this might that, so let me give you a couple of the data points because it's the, the consistency part really kind of threw me so 76 uh percent of the respondents agree with the statement i am committed to helping my company fight racism and justice within the organization compared to 83% in 2021. So that number went down 
Okay. That's seven points uh, in a couple of years. So that's the employee's perception of their, of they are going to help their company with those things. Now, the next 47% of employees agree with the statement. I feel the focus on DEI is blown out of proportion. <laughs> hmm. So, okay. Do they have details on what they mean by blown out of proportion? I think it's uh, talked about too much. I think that's the way that that, that was phrased was just, it's just, Interesting. we talk about it too much. Okay. Third thing, 78% indicated that it's very important for their company to be an inclusive organization. Okay. That tracks with the first thing. Like, okay. All right. Compared to 2021, fewer employees now view their direct managers and senior leaders as inclusive. <laughs> so which is it? Like which 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 like which lane are we following? And what I believe is happening as I look at all the data is I think it's there's no one actually in this particular survey. I don't think that they define this is what inclusive is and means. Now, like I do like that they do statements. I actually appreciate that. I just didn't see any consistency. Mm -hmm. So I want other people to go look at the study and then message me where I was wrong because uh, clearly there is some some consistency that I just couldn't figure it out. So go to saramount.com, go into their uh, research area, insights area, take a look at it, and then please tell me like what I got wrong here. So, hmm. There you go. That's interesting. I, you know, I, I think, I feel, I felt this way, not with inclusivity, but I just felt the company's mission – when I was in corporate, the company's mission wasn't my mission, yeah. right? I worked at the company to get a paycheck, right? right? I right. had to pay for my family, raise the kids, all that stuff. Did I like the company? Yes, that was a bonus. Did I enjoy the people? Bonus, right? All of that, bonus, and that was good. But I never went to work saying, I'm going to run through a wall for you. Because you believe in this. <laughs> right. Right. And well, I and I think over the well, last I think this is a COVID effect of people feeling closer, maybe, to their companies and the missions of the company because the world was hit with something. I think they they want different things from their companies. Well so they, you just they, you just wanted a paycheck. Well, yeah, I just wanted to. Well, and I wanted more, but I yeah, didn't. Yeah, yeah. Career I didn't hang my hat. Yeah, everything. Right, I wasn't yeah. concerned with. Well, the company uh, believes in this, and so they don't support I'm the going. SPCA. <clears throat> I can't work there. Right. So <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think this is just employees have their own mission in life, and so when they're not supporting certain things like inclusivity, I don't think it's because they hate people or they hate. Being uh, inclusive, no, I don't they ju they're just there to do a job. They're not. Yeah, I don't think they're not supporting it. I just don't think they care about it. All right. Well, I'd say they care, but they don't care about supporting the company's mission behind it. Whatever. I think yeah. younger generations. I think both millennials and uh, Gen Z, they're bringing to the table a different expectation from the company. Yeah. And some companies are going to abide, and some won't. Right. And, Some and if you don't, that's right. Yeah. That's right. All right. All right. What do you got? So, Textio, our friends at Textio, I I mm. felt like we talked about this somewhere before, but I, I I couldn't find it, and so I put it put it in because I I just thought this was really kind of common sense, but interesting too. So, ten percent of all employee attrition is caused by low quality feedback. Uh, so I got this off of Unleash was running a feature mm -hmm. on this. So, William, let me ask you, how do you like your feedback? I like it uh, <laughs> solicited and negative. You, you, I don't think That's you like how I feedback. Want it. You don't like feedback. No, I do. I like, so, I like when I ask, so solicited, yeah. and I want negative. Yeah. I don't, you, you know I don't where want... you're great. Tell me where I suck. That's exactly right. Yeah. That's so what, That's what I want to know. From right. very specific people. So not all feedback is the same. We know this, right? But, Correct. or, and how it's delivered 
is impacting employee attrition. So to 10%. I can see that. Right. So the type of feedback, whether positive or negative, mm -hmm. doesn't matter. You can give negative feedback or positive yeah. feedback. That was not the issue. How was it delivered? Huh. Because people receive feedback <laughs> in a different way. And so when God, I saw I would this. God, suck it. <laughs> yeah. Well, when I saw this, I thought, oh, this is fucking perfect. Because oh, you know what say, terrible. Ryan, how do you like mm. feedback? I'm like, just give it to me, baby. Just give it to me. Right? So when I saw this, I but thought, that, well. But that doesn't work with younger people. Right. Yeah. And so, that doesn't work with. You. Right. So, so hmm. top talent and bad, but attrition just across the board, when you deliver bad feedback or not, I should say, when you deliver feedback in a bad, what is perceived as a bad way. Poorly. Yeah. Poorly. People don't care. Sayonara. Right. That's right. I think back to, I, I've told you this before, I, I worked at a staffing company. This is back in like 2001 or three or whatever the hell it was. But no, I lie. It was 2006 because I got just gotten back from my honeymoon. And my manager said something to me my first day back. She was just being a manager. Yeah. yeah. I didn't give a fuck. I was like, I'm yeah. out of here. I'm done. I left. Yeah. Like I had, it's like. Wrong day. Yeah. Wrong day. Wrong, my Wrong first day. day back. And then you go back to, to the house and you're like, honey, guess what? <laughs> yeah, made my first new job. executive decision. Um, well, yeah, I, 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 I think that the the thing is is it also kind of gets down to knowing your employees. Yeah. So you've got to spend time with them. You've got to be doing the check ins, etc. So you kind mm -hmm. of can tailor, not can, you should tailor your feedback, be either positive or negative, right, to the person. Like, okay, and again, how do you like your feedback? Is a kind of a funny way of getting there, but it's like. If I know that the person that works for me just doesn't, they just don't like negative feedback. Right. But you know what? There's a way to talk about it and 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 couch it in ways that you're not talking about them. It's right. like, all right, hey, listen, I got I got this thing going on with this other employee. Can't tell you who it is, but here's something: they're not showing up to work on time. And it's just, it's killing me. I just don't know what to do. Like, you know, like there's ways yeah. to do it. That's a, a dumb one. Well, but, what would you but do? The idea I'd is... fire him. Good. Get the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> and here's your pink slip. Yeah. I, I think, I think the thing is, is it's if knowing your, anytime there's a cookie cutter approach to yeah. feedback, it's already, you're already lost. Yeah. If you've applied a layer of personalization, you've tried. Now, mm -hmm. how that person takes it, it's always fascinating to me because uh, I've gotten into trouble in uh, historically into trouble because I'll just say whatever the fuck I want. And then how you take it, that's, that's on you, problem. Honey. That's you, exactly. <laughs> so when people tell me like, and I've gotten this feedback all my life, like literally all my life, same, same feedback. It's like, you should really watch how you talk to people. I'm like, no, they should really think about how they consume shit. <laughs> it's not my it's not my fucking problem after i've said it out of my mouth fuck uh -huh. that, that that's on you how you consume it is a, a you thing not a me thing yeah um however if we're looking at corporate we're looking at feedback in the way that we're thinking about it here and how it affects attrition now where it attrition isn't a bad word turnover isn't a bad no. word. no it's the regrettable regrettable right right so if we're losing top talent because of the way that we're doing feedback, stop the presses. We need to actually, this is, this is worth stopping down and fix it. Cause you don't want to lose talent because of the way that you're, uh, again, either the way that you're rendering the feedback or whether or not it's the ratio of positive to negative, like don't lose talent, don't lose talented people. And if that comes down to feedback, find out how yeah. to make that work. So you don't lose good people. Yeah. So thought it was interesting and wanted to, to bring it I to love the it. team. Good one. <laughs> All right, Ryan, because you're squarely in Gen X. Gen um, X was voted the best managers amongst their colleagues. That is me. This is this is on uh, BenefitNews.com. So I voted twice. Um, this is data according to FlexJobs, 
There are 2024 generations at work. And as we learned last week, there are truly five generations at work. Uh, and so, of course, I said suck it, boomers, boomers and millennials. Um, <laughs> it won't last because Gen X is a smaller generation, mm-hmm. uh, population size-wise, uh, than millennials and boomers. So we're kind of in, a, in between these two kind of mammoth. So it won't last. So we should celebrate the fact that we are killing it right now. Uh, but I believe, and I really believe this, I believe millennials will be better managers than we were. And I think there will be the, and all of this will go away and they'll be better managers for a longer period of time. So but right now we're on top, right? Right now. Hey. <laughs> you I'm going to take the W and going. I'm going to go. So I'll see you later. Have a great time. 100%. Night. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So skills gap mm-hmm. can cost employers a month of productivity each year. But wait, there's more. All right. Check this out. 25 working days mm-hmm. per employee per year. So 25 days per employee per year are lost to inefficiencies at work. So this doesn't count the unaccounted, like, I'm just right. not working right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, hours, a different right? Yeah, yeah. So, so this is a this is across twelve thousand employees across eighteen industries in the U.S. and U.K. So workers spend about fourteen point three hours uh, per week on data tasks, makes up about thirty six percent of their work week. Four point three hours are spent on are spent unproductively due to skills gaps. So think, I can see that. I don't know how to do something on Excel. I'm going to go learn it on the job, but I don't have proper training or proper access to learning to do that, right? I'm going to go Google. I'm curious as to how this works. And then you're off. It just kind of go down the rabbit hole. So anyhow, that equates to 25 days per year per employee on unproductive, I'm not working hours. So. It kind of got to me where what I was thinking through this and thinking, okay, so how does one fix this? And there's, you know, 30 ways to to do this. But, you know, off the top of my head, I just thought it's not about finding the talent that can actually do it. It's about refining the talent that you have. 100%. Right? Now, I don't want to say upskilling, but upskilling, right? But refine the talent that you have and give them access to the learning ability to the different trainings that are out there and things like that, but make it so that they actually have it at their fingertips. So in real time, as they're doing things, those four plus hours that they're Googling and trying to figure stuff out on their own can actually be learned. So well, I think the, there's kind of two best. things. The, uh, the hours of 14.3 hours that they're, working with data task Mm -hmm. i think ai and gen ai is going to take a lot of that out but they're still going to have hours of interpreting or validating so so they'll still be doing things with data but it'll just be different yeah the 4.3 hours again some of that's curiosity it's like i don't you know i don't know how to do this let me see if i can find a gen ai tool that does that now they're on the internet looking around trying to find stuff you and I have seen this. Yeah. You and I have seen this with clients and companies. We've seen this where employees, they're taking initiative. So in a weird way, we look at it as right. unproductive and inefficient and all that other stuff. They're just they're just trying to, you're curious. They're right. trying to be better. Now, they, they don't see it. I would imagine if we surveyed the employees, if we'd find out they don't view it as inefficient at all. Well, so there's there's two things there, two things. And I th- and I think this is important. So let's just let's just round it to five. We'll say five right, hours. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so five yeah, hours fair. I'm spending googling and researching and doing all this stuff so I can learn something. One could say one argument could be, well, you're taking that freedom and that creative creativity ability away, and then you're going to frustrate your employee and they're going to go away. That's right. Partially true. Partially true. The other side to that. And this is kind of, I think, I'm more heavily on this side. I'm frustrated as hell. (laughs) Five hours in, I'm still trying to figure out 
how to right. make something right. work, how to integrate my 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 email account, whatever you're on, into something else, or how to get Slack to do like I'm frustrated, which now goes into another task, which now I start talking and gabbing to other people. And now right, right. it's because just a poison. snowball. Right. Yeah. Right, right. So companies need to provide that layer of training at the point, as you mentioned, yeah. at the moment that they need the training. Okay. Real time and on the job at training. At the same time, I think you solve that for curiosity. Yeah. So if you want to, if you want to foster curiosity, which would lead to innovation or can lead to innovation. So mm-hmm. if somebody wants to look, figure out like how to make a Gen AI video, uh, you know, an explainer video, and they just have no idea even where to start, that's a curiosity. It has nothing to do with their job right. job. It's just a curiosity. Fuel that curiosity and let them figure that out. Like, okay, that's uh, what are you trying to learn? Yeah. Boop. Okay, I'm great. curious Here's what the water tools. temperature is right now to see how I can get out of here and go fishing. But hundred uh, percent. I mean, no one's so going to pay me to do that. Well, I guess technically, I could get paid to do that. You could get paid. Yeah. Yes, you could. So if anyone's listening, better. who wants to be a sponsor of a boat, <laughs> let me know. <laughs> I know Tease. a guy. Tease nuts. <laughs> All right, are we, are we on the funding? We're all money, baby. All right, ding ding. All right, cloud pay. A payroll service provider lands $120 million in new funding. It's on TechCrunch, so you can read kind of the story. So, you know, first thing that comes out of my mm-hmm. mouth is probably going to be seem negative, uh, but it isn't. It's about fucking time. So, the thing about uh, cloud pay, uh, I would say even less than six years ago, they ADP, and I'd say there's probably a safeguard maybe three other players had the global payroll market by the balls and they let all of these other people creep in. So we've, we've dealt with remote and deal and just, you know, you go around the rippling and all of these different folks that are now can, can and effectively do Mm -hmm. remote global payroll. it, It seems like they, they, this should have been made. Yeah. way before all these players got in so that they dig in and really kind of uh it could have created maybe some some defensible positions yeah but i think they're playing i you know first of all i hope i'm wrong mm-hmm. because i like the people at cloud pay and 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 so they're i think they're based in the uk and in raleigh so they've got kind of a, a both of them uh, going on it's the old i think it's the old patterson's um but anyhow I'm worried that it's too late, and I hope that I'm wrong. But I think that I see this funding, and I love that someone got $120 million. However, I wish I would have seen this funding about six years ago. Yeah, and it's uh, – payroll, global payroll is probably one of the mo- most complex oh, 100%. areas in, in this space, right? Hundred percent. So when you mentioned deal and you mentioned, you know, some of these others, yeah. these aren't rippling, these aren't small players. <laughs> like no. Yeah. So when you say six years ago, these companies potentially don't make it to where they are today. Had That's they correct. have done this, right? Now can cloud cloud pay leapfrog that or do they I mean, you know They're not gonna be able to acquire them. No. So that's out. Yeah. And now it might be a roll up. You could see someone come along and go, oh, yeah, I like what this one, right. this one, and this one does. <laughs> okay. And do something like that. But they had the chance yeah. to actually go and uh, again, somebody hesitated. Somebody hesitated. Yeah. And so, and again, you allowed, you allowed competitors to creep into your space right. without creating enough differentiation. Yeah. And uh, again, hope I'm wrong because I, yeah. I do like know the XC, uh, XCO, the CEO, and then former CEO, and and I know their marketer, and, yeah. and I like them. Yeah. However, yeah, I just well, wish it, that this would have been done earlier. Yeah. Well, and and you know another point that we'll, we'll jump to the next one. These new companies that can't say not even new, but the companies that came in during that time are modern. Right. right, they're flexible, That's a good they're point. nimble, they're modern, they're on the latest, greatest, they're innovating all the time. I try. Can they do this now? Well, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. 
We'll see. I, I, let's hope for the best, right? Let's hope for the best for him. Ryan Tezzi, T E Z I. Yeah. Tezzi Tezzi. eight. <laughs> what was funny about you, that? What did I say? You got some explaining to do. All right, <laughs> nine million to launch Max. Yeah. The first fully autonomous, autonomous is a keyword here. Yeah. AI recruiter. And uh, this is on their blog, blog.tezzy.ai. So if you go to tezzy.ai, you can kind of figure it out. So I'm like, Max? I kind of like the name Max. I do. I, know it, I don't hate it. It's 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 like you're maximizing, right? So like it 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 comes across fullest. a lot of cool, cool ways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To the max. I'm fascinated by this because of the word autonomous, mm -hmm. and so I want to see how autonomous is really like in the real world, and this could fuel if if they're successful. And nine million dollars is, is a pretty good is a pretty good number. Um, this could lead to what people have been fearing in our space and the uh, sourcing sure. and recruiting space for years when they hear about AI, it's like, this is going to take my job. Well, <laughs> this is actually <laughs> 2026 will be your last person sourced, homie. Sorry. Yeah, you're, no. the, the future's Tessie, Tessie just announced future's here now. Homie. Yeah. yeah. So FOBO, yeah. Is, is is legit. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, what did you see? So this is this is a sourcing. This is sourcing. This is screening. This is scheduling. This autonomous. is autonomous. This is autonomous. Yeah. The, so these are all the activities. And I know there's a lot of hate out there for what I'm about to say. These are all of the activities that are grouped in as low value activities in the mm -hmm. world of recruiting. Not saying sourcing is not important. Not saying screening and schedule. All of that is super important. And sourcing takes a lot of skill. I was there, done it, been there, got it. But these are three things that if automated properly and run by the human, right, right, make right, a difference. Right, right. right? Yeah. this makes a difference. It's scalable. It's, it's, it's everything that the world of recruiting has been talking about and or fearing yeah. For a very long time. Now, here's here's my thought on, on fear. And I've said this before and, you know, I've, I've been hit on it before, but whatever. This is just my thought. Yeah. As a sourcer, are you fearing technology? Are you hating on technology? Right. Taking over sourcing and automating and saying you're better versus the machine. This is like, you know, machine versus man and chess and all of that. Right. Right. Because you believe that or is it? More what I think that you just don't want to move on, right? You don't learn, and yeah, you don't you don't want evolve. to learn something new. Yeah, yeah, it's time to evolve. This is the time. I think more the latter. I think more the latter than the former. Yeah, yeah. So th this is the time to evolve, right? We, we we you hear this in investing. You hear this in all this stuff all the time. You see it, do it, right? Like okay, you hold, you heard about like all these you know social media people making buka dollars on social and all this stuff, right? Going from platform to platform, yeah, they saw it in 2005. Right. By 2007, they were the top 100, first 100 people doing this. They didn't wait until yep. 2012. This is the time right now. If you're a sourcer, get on Jump board. In. Get better. Not at sourcing. Again. Get better at being a leader in recruitment. And Back to the train metaphor. Yes. Yeah, exactly. So – Good luck to everybody. I love the play. Three funding stories left, Ryan. So Impact Tool, it's an AI-driven career platform, raises $4 million uh, to boost AI job matching. Hmm. This is on technews180.com, so you can go look there and read a little bit more about it. The recent funding, so this is a quote, the recent funding will enable Impact Pool to enhance its technology focusing on diversity and inclusion. So first of all, I'll get the comedy out of the way first because the comedy for me when I read that statement was, well, it hasn't been doing this since the job. Yeah. <laughs> kind of sounds Kind of crazy. what you do. Uh, anyhow. But I think what it's really saying is they have uh, AI, AI uh, matching and it does diversity inclusion. They just want it to be better. So right. good for them. Four million bucks. Um, and, uh, again, it's an AI driven career platform. 
So it's basically working with you to then figure out what your next steps are, what you need to learn, this, that, the other. So good for them. Yeah. Uh, and good for them raising the money and good for them on whether, how, how they're going to spend it. Skillfully. I like that name. It is. Skillfully name. raises 2.5 in seed funding, hiring decisions with 100% precision See, see skills in action before you hire. I love plays like this. I feel like you got to so, say 99.9% precision. Dude, said 100%. I'm like, I'm, yeah, yeah. we're going with it. I mean, Clorox doesn't kill 100% of fucking germs. Well, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I've depends never gotten sick, but I'm just Depends saying. on how much you purple <laughs> How many bottles you using? <laughs> I'm definitely gonna kill. Why are you still partner. wiping that counter, Dad? Because <laughs> it's only ninety nine point nine. Salmonella. <laughs> salmonella. Shit, we ain't having no same, salmonella. I use the same knife across butter to chicken. There. Oh, care. yeah, yeah. No, at this point, you're just you're building intestinal fortitude. Yes. Um. So skillful, skillfully, go to their website skillful. Dot ly, which is kind of cool. And it's in their newsroom about kind of what they're doing in terms of that. But I love this for employees and employers because it's a try before you buy. It's simulation software, right? So you get to do tasks. You get to kind of see the job. You get to do the bid. They get to see you, they being the employers. You as a candidate get to see this uh, and see if you want to do it. I love stuff like this. If it's in VR, if it's, if it's you know, going through the website. I like the companies that have done it historically. Mm -hmm. It's just good. Like, go test it. And in that way, maybe we have less attrition. Maybe we have less problems down the yeah. road because, you you know, it wasn't just a conversation. You got to try before you buy. So good luck for skillfully. Uh, well, good job skillfully for raising yeah. the money. But also, I love the technology. We, I think we, we need to – I'm going to make a note. We need to have a show on – on on this conversation where try before you buy yeah. process, right? So I get it from the employer side. We've always said that because we were selling staffing, right. right? Try before you buy, attempt the perm, et cetera. But I, I really think, and, and this is kind of what you were alluding to, the candidates have that option as well. Yes. It's just I, not. Yeah, this isn't they, for me. I did, I did the bit. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would never be successful. You get in dinged this. as a as a, an applicant or a candidate or a job seeker for doing that. Yeah, and time is well. Also, it takes some of the BS out of the process. Yeah, because you're just like, hey, listen, you know what? Instead of me telling you how wonderful the job is, and you telling me how wonderful you yeah. are, let's skip the wonderful. Yeah, here's, here's the bit. Yeah, here's, here's why it sucks. Here's why it yeah. sucks. But you know what? I'll, I'll tell you just a, a quick personal story. Years ago, uh, when I was I was on the agency side of things, we would do a day in a life. It would it was it was a part of the hiring process, where when we were serious about a candidate, we would you know pay for them to come in and have a day with us, and we didn't hide anything from them. Like it was when you walked in, it's as if you were an employee right. that had been there for two years. We were going to treat you that way. We were going to talk that right. way. <laughs> like there was no BS because if we didn't want them to get to go through the hiring process and then come in and go, oh, my God, you guys curse like fucking sailors and you yeah. drink like yeah. sailors. Like, you know, OK, all the all the whatever the bad, the good, all that stuff. It's like, no, we want everything to be out on the table. Right. right. And again, ha I'd say half the candidates came in, did a day in life and said, <laughs> no. Yeah. These guys are insane. And then half of them are like, oh, no, this is – I found my people. I want to do this. So uh, it's – I understand that's hard to get people to take off work and, you know, like – and kind of maybe paying them, but paying them for their parking, paying for a lunch, like some type of remuneration, just finding a way to compensate them so that they don't feel like they're being taken advantage of. Right. But, like, getting them in there to to just – See all the bullshit. All jobs have bullshit. So it's very true. Like, as fast as we can get to the bullshit, the better. Right. Again, congrats to Skillfully. Right. Nice. Last funding story. And it's a it's a smaller it's a smaller bid. 
um, but it's uh, the, the title of this is Richard King Mellon Foundation has committed three hundred thousand dollars to a company called Loan Buy. So Loan B Y E, a Pittsburgh-based company specializing in student loan debt relief solutions for employers. So Loan Boy, Loan Bite, Loan Buy dot com loan buy dot com go take a look at it what i like about this play is it's actually a benefit <laughs> <laughs> like like not making fun of pet insurance yeah however if you're if you're bringing in college graduates um early stage college graduates like you know this is a tax-free student loan repayment benefit for employers to offer it's an actual benefit that will help you recruit, retain talent. I think it's good for all involved. I wish I would have had this uh, for me when I, because I got, a, I had, I had debt. I had student debt yep. uh, from my undergrad and from my first master's. I didn't have a whole lot of debt from uh, my MBA, but I had some debt that I had to carry forth. And it took Michael and I, you know, 10 years or whatever the hell it was mm-hmm. to pay it all off. But like, if I go work with a company, that's helping me with that. I'm, I'm putting it. I'm, I mean, first of all, that's a benefit I'm going to take advantage of. Yeah. So, and and there's a lot of these have hooks in them as well, right? Right. You need to be here for X amount of time, et cetera, et cetera. But yeah, I mean, shit, if I had help paying all that, that'd be amazing. I know. Right. It took 10 years of just checks. We were just talking about that last night. Checks, 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 checks for 10 years. Yeah. Oh, look yeah. where it got. Oh, it was. Go mommy. Well, <laughs> <laughs> so check them out. Loan by BYE.com. All right. We are done. We have Barfed. wrapped it up for the weekend. If you're listening and watching still, please subscribe. We would love to have you on board. If you have a chance, 100%. make sure you go into your, your app wherever you are. Hit that review button. That always helps us. And uh, until next time. Substack. Oh, yeah, Substack, too. Until next time now.